Hey everyone, it's Lockhart QC here and welcome to another episode in my Call of Duty Zombies Retrospective series, a series in which we look through all of the Call of Duty Zombies maps cut content, history, gameplay and much more. And today, don't forget to slip into the afterlife as we're venturing into Alcatraz in Mob of the Dead. So starting off with the development history, launching on April 16th 2013 as a part of the Uprising DLC map pack for Black Ops 2, Mob of the Dead is a special map indeed. You see, back in 2012 and 2013, Black Ops 2 was divided in a very rough spot in the zombies community. Players didn't like Transit, they didn't like Die Rise, and they didn't like Nuketown Zombies as much as the maps offered in the past, whilst also missing the Ultimus crew who at this point hadn't even been seen or mentioned since the ending of the Moon Easter Egg in Black Ops 1. And then came Mob of the Dead, worked on mostly by a mixture of the multiplayer and campaign teams led by Jason Blundell rather than Jimmy Zielinski who the Zombies team were primarily working on Buried. Mob of the Dead was so well received by the Zombies community and casual fans alike and to this day is so considered as one of the best Zombies maps of all time and is my personal second favourite map out of every single Zombies map including non-Treyarch maps. This is due to the brilliant gameplay, engaging story of the mobsters trying to escape purgatory and Alcatraz in the setting of the real life prison and much more. Mob of the Dead helped save zombies out of the grave, like pun intended by the way, at the time and started an upwards trajectory of the game mode becoming and evolving into a fan favourite going into Black Ops 3. Mob of the Dead is described as in game as follows. Battle the undead as you attempt to break free from the physical and metaphorical incarceration of Alcatraz Prison. And the map contains loads of cut content and it's really interesting, I really recommend that a lot of you do your own research and sort of you know dive deep into the cut content as Mob of the Dead has loads and it would just take me another half an hour to explain most of it so I will explain a few things in this video, however not everything. One example is that in the grief version for Mob of the Dead cell block, there was actually a cut special item which was Richtofen's zombie head, which could be fully interacted with along with other cut features. Whilst developing Mob of the Dead, Treyarch actually got full access to Alcatraz Island and even scanned the facility to recreate the cell blocks, docks, industries, wall textures, buildings and much more, whilst also taking inspiration from the real life June 1962 Alcatraz real life escape attempt which is so cool in my opinion. Where in June 1962, inmates Clarence Anglin, John Anglin and Frank Morris escaped from Alcatraz late in the night of June 11th or early in the morning of June 12th, it's not quite known on that specific fact. The three men tucked paper mache heads resembling their own likenesses into their beds, broke out of the main prison via the ventilation ducts and unguarded facilities at the prison and then departed the island aboard an unmanned inflatable raft to an uncertain fate. To this day, no one actually knows what happens to the three. And a fourth co-conspirator, Alan West, also failed in his escape attempt and remained on the island. In real life, Alcatraz was known as the unescapable prison and was known as the hellhole of the US, making it a perfect fit for a zombies map. Okay, now talking about the story and lore for Mob of the Dead. Mob of the Dead occurs within the infamous Alcatraz Island and includes the Golden Gate Bridge under construction in the 1930s. The bulk of the map is set during the Prohibition Era, or also known as the Depression Era of America on New Year's Eve. The four playable characters are Finn O'Leary who ran gambling rackets, Albert Arlington, the weasel, a bank robber as well as a master schemer, 
Salvador De Luca, a mob crime boss in the Mafia, and Billy Handsome, a tough man for hire and a mass murderer, all three working under the De Luca crime family. And just like Call of the Dead before it in Black Ops 1, Mob of the Dead also features a celebrity crew and cast for the map, featuring Ray Liotta, Chaz Palmenteri, Joe Palitelliano, Michael Madsen, all four making the iconic mobsters known in Mob of the Dead. Whilst in Alcatraz, Billy and his fellow mobsters were talked into escaping the prison by the Weasel, who had devised a plan to fly off the roof of the prison in a makeshift plane titled the Icarus designed by himself, which can actually be found in comic books, drawings and scraps around the map. The plan did not work out however, with the crew flying off the island and then crashing onto the Golden Gate Bridge, as well as the mobsters then blamed Arlington for the plan's failure, feeling cheated Billy, Sal and Finn crafted weapons and lured Arlington onto the roof where they then brutally murdered him. For the murder of the weasel, Billy and the other two mobsters were sentenced to death by the electric chair on the morning of January 19th, 1934. With no memory of the escape plan's failure and the murder of Arlington, Billy, Sal and Finn awoke in Alcatraz again, and once again attempted to escape now finding themselves in an infinite purgatory surrounded by perks, zombies and other supernatural elements occurring in a time loop cycle. This is where, during the main easter egg quest, the four mobsters fly to the Golden Gate Bridge again, where the weasel now kills the other three mobsters, thus ending the cycle of the mobsters in Alcatraz. However, then explained in Black Ops 4's Blood of the Dead story, the Warden uses Alcatraz as a pocket dimension with the help of the Shadow Man to trap the souls of the prisoners, as well as the Primus characters seen in Black Ops 3 Black Ops 4, with the help of Samuel Stu Doolinger and the Weasel, the Primus crew finally end the cycle, escape the island, and flee from the pocket dimension of Alcatraz. Mob of the Dead also features so many new innovations and gameplay features, with the feedback from Transit, Nuketown Zombies and Die Rise regarding buildables, Mob of the Dead now features an in-game HUD system where parts are now sorted into your inventory as a quality of life feature. Before in Transit you would have to pick up each part individually, take it to the buildable table and do it that way. If you were downed or fall off the map you could actually indefinitely lose the part either that or it just spawns back to its original location. However, Mob of the Dead made sure that you could actually store the parts infinitely, meaning that they were there and they couldn't be dropped and it was just a such a clutch feature to add. Mob of the Dead was also the first map ever to not only change the main theme of the map, the round music, as well as adding a background soundtrack to the story. A new design for the mystery box, but also for the first time Mob of the Dead changed the entire hood to match the theme of Alcatraz. This then carried on, obviously Mob of the Dead having the theme of Alcatraz in the prison, Buried having a Wild West cowboy aesthetic, and Origins having a diesel punk aesthetic. This also then carried on into Black Ops 3. Mob of the Dead's main wonder weapon is the Blundergat, which is a combination of the Blunderbuss and Gatling Gun, which is inspired from real life of Alcatraz's roots as a Civil War fort. This weapon is truly amazing and iconic to Mob of the Dead, and can either be used as a shotgun even being upgraded into the sweeper, or can be upgraded separately via the buildable acid gat parts which shoot acid grenade pellets onto the zombies, dealing lots of damage whilst also distracting the zombies for a short amount of time. On Mob of the Dead, the Ray Gun also makes a reappearance, as well as the Ray Gun Mark II, which wasn't available at launch but then later got added during Buried's map pack. Mob of the Dead also features the brand new Afterlife mode and becomes the first ever map in Zombies history to ditch Quick Revive altogether after its inclusion in Verruchtenwald at War. 
Afterlife allows the player to become a ghostly figure to zap open doors, zap open power-up cages, start up generators, and can also be used to shock zombies teleporting them away briefly to use to revive yourself. Afterlife is also used brilliantly to open areas of the map and discover secret easter eggs as well as messages on the wall not seen in regular normal sight. The map also features a brand new perk called Electric Cherry, costing 2000 points, which adds electricity effects to all reloads, dealing damage to zombies around you, as well as adding an electric effect once downed and in afterlife mode. All of the perks in Mob of the Dead also zip in and out of the pocket dimension, displaying flashing black and white effects and featuring alternate eerie new perk jingles. Honestly, these perk jingles sound really creepy but definitely fit in theme with the map overall. Mob of the Dead also features a brand new boss zombie in the form of Brutus, also known as the Warden. Fun fact, Brutus has also now come back in the Black Ops 6 multiplayer beta as an operator. Brutus is an extra strong zombie type and can down you in two hits even with Jug. Brutus's main feature though is running around the map, smashing down barricades as well as locking down buildable tables, the mystery box, pack-a-punch and all perk machines, having to make you rebuy them to reuse them. Brutus also spawns a smoke grenade when downed, which can really mess up with training and tight corridor vision. Mob of the Dead also features a very unique pack-a-punch method that goes right into the theming of Alcatraz and the story. To access Pack-a-Punch, players must build the plane on the roof to fly to the Golden Gate Bridge. These parts are scattered throughout the map and require unique side quests to procure each one. For example, surviving zombies in the laundry room showers, shocking the generators to access the main generator, and much more. Once on the Golden Gate Bridge, you have a lot more room to train, and the Golden Gate Bridge as a whole is one of the best training spots in all of Zombies, as well as the only way back to Alcatraz is by electric chair. And then to access Pack-a-Punch again, you must wait an entire round and then refuel the plane using fuel canisters which can be found around the map in similar places to their original counterparts. Mob of the Dead also features new traps in the form of the Acid Trap in the cafeteria, as well as the Blades Trap found in the Warden's office, as well as the Sniper Tower Trap found in the docks. A new utility is also introduced in Mob of the Dead being the Gondola, which can transport players between the main prison and the docks, very similar to the zipline in Shino Numa. You can also acquire a new melee weapon known as the Golden Spork, which is a one-hit melee for a very long time, carrying you into the high rounds, as well as the Hell's Retriever, the first ever tomahawk weapon inside of Call of Duty Zombies. Being also upgraded into the Hell's Redeemer, the tomahawk is acquired by feeding zombies to three Cerberus head dogs around the map. The Hell's Retriever and Hell's Redeemer can be used to bring power-ups closer to you from far away, access schools and secrets outside of the map, and can be charged two or three times depending on the upgrade to kill entire hordes of zombies as well as Brutus. Mob of the Dead also features more unique weapons such as the Black Ops 2 weapons as well as the introduction of the AK-47 into zombies which Pack-a-Punched even becomes the Reznov's Revenge referencing the World at War Black Ops 1 character Victor Reznov. Mob of the Dead also features the Uzi, the Tommy Gun as it fits extremely well with the mob and prison theming of the 1930s, as well as the Death Machine no longer being a power-up but its own separate weapon, returns with its own ammo counter, as well as the Raygun Mark II, as well as a brand new zombie shield returning from transit, being themed after a prison door. Next up, let's talk cameos and map appearances. Mob of the Dead in Black Ops 2 was originally going to be set on the entirety of Alcatraz Island, but Treyarch couldn't do it due to the tech limitations of the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. So when the map was later remade for Black Ops 4 in Blood of the Dead in 2018, the map featured much more of the island such as the Warden's Houses, 
industries factories, as well as the catwalk leading to the prison yard. Blood of the Dead will get its own episode in this series and I'll go more in depth on it in that video, but it did feature the premise characters attempting to break the cycle from Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4 and escape Alcatraz Island featuring the Black Ops 4 zombies gameplay system. Sadly, Blood of the Dead was not well received by the zombies community and casual players due to many launch bugs and glitches the Black Ops 4 mechanics, as well as featuring one of the most hated, complex and difficult easter egg quests of all time. Alcatraz also features in Black Ops 4's Blackout as a separate battle royale variant of the map which was then reused and returned as Rebirth Island in Call of Duty Mobile, Modern Warfare 2019, Modern Warfare 2 2022, Modern Warfare 3 2023 and Vanguard's Warzone updates, as well as in the campaign mission in Black Ops 1 even though Alcatraz and Rebirth Island are actually two separate entities. Mob of the Dead also features inside of the Black Ops 3 map Revelations, featuring parts of the cell blocks and the cafeteria. It was featured in Revelations as in the story the premise characters in between Zetsubo, Noshima and Gord Crovey do actually feature and in Alcatraz and visit there to get these sort of blood vials. Mob of the Dead was also added as Treyarch and Blundell knew that it was a fan favourite and it had to feature in Revelations, also featuring the Mob of the Dead soundtrack, round change music as well as the Weasel's hat which can be worn by the entirety of the Primus crew as a sort of weird easter egg gameplay feature but it's just really cool in my opinion. Mob of the Dead also features in the Grief mode in Black Ops 2 which makes a return from Transit, featuring you playing as prisoners versus the guards fighting inside of these cell blocks. Grief also features PhD Flopper and Mule Kick which are fully usable perks in the map, making their omission from pretty much every map in Black Ops 2 that much more questionable. So next up let's talk easter eggs. Mob of the Dead features a myriad of easter eggs and side quests. Including the main quest which is titled Pop Goes the Weasel and follows the playable character's estate attempts to escape the island. It is the first time ever in Call of Duty Zombies that the players can complete the level and end the game without being killed by zombies. Nowadays in Cold War etc you can just exfil but Mob of the Dead was the first map to introduce this feature. It also marks the first time in Zombies that a playable character can become hostile style to the other players engaging in PvP. To complete it successfully, players that are controlling Sal, Billy and Finn will have to kill the player controlling the weasel or vice versa, going into the fact that Black Ops 2 did feature alternate easter egg endings with the other maps. The canon ending however has been confirmed to be the weasel killing the other players, proven by Black Ops 4's Blood of the Dead as well as Mob of the Dead's The Cycle Is Broken ending message. An alternate ending to Mob of the Dead can also be seen in the beginning of a match. If the player does not move and waits for the entire afterlife timer to be consumed, a secret ending will be triggered, in which the screen turns to black and white, the mobsters bleed out and Samantha's lullaby can be heard whilst the camera then pans to the moon which obviously references the Black Ops 1 map, Moon. Mob of the Dead also features audio logs, scraps of paper, ciphers and radios from Stanley Ferguson as well as other characters detailing the events prior to the mobsters getting arrested and thrown into Alcatraz and also post the events of Mob of the Dead detailing what happened on the roof with the killing of the weasel. The map also features the song Rusty Cage by Johnny Cash which is the main easter egg quest song, also can be activated using three bottles of whiskey around the map, as well as the second easter egg song called Where Are We Going by Elena Siegman, Maluka and Kevin Sherwood which can be activated by the player inputting 935 into the tower panel. 
In this panel you can also input 666, 115 and 999 to get all weird responses from Brutus and the Warden. Some of these are quite interesting and are very weird quotes that you can get mid game. So welcome back to Growing Pains, this is the section of the video where I talk about issues I have with the map and how I'd fix them, but to be honest, unlike other maps in the series, Mob of the Dead for me is a well designed map and there aren't really too many growing pains for me in this video. If I had to really nitpick, I wished that Treyarch had added power ups to the bridge. This is because as after the round you actually spawn and fly to the Golden Gate Bridge, afterwards power ups will no longer spawn on the bridge, meaning that you can actually run out of ammo really quickly because you won't be able to get any max ammos, forcing you to go back to the island. But to be honest, I understand why this was done, because this was done to actually balance the fact that the Golden Gate Bridge was just such a broken training spot, honestly you can survive into the hundreds on this map. Also another little nitpick here, I really wish that PhD Flopper, Who's Who, Mule Kick and Tombstone were also added onto the map for more perk variety. And welcome back to Trivia Time, the section of the video where I give you little cool facts in development for Mob of the Dead. Did you know? The Perka Cola machines and the Pack Punch machine make distorted noises and flicker between colour and black and white textures, with the exception of Electric Cherry. It does not flicker but still makes distorted noises. And if you listen very carefully, these noises are actually the perk jingles, very distorted and very weird. Did you know? When near the CD block at the Cerberus's head spawn, there is a lava pit. If the player crouches and throws a grenade into the lava pit, they will receive 20 points. Did you know? The weasel has a quote in which he says, Nikolai, Nikolai, why do I keep hearing that name? Which could be a nod to the fact that the Primus characters were later returning in Black Ops 2's Origins. Or this may be even a nod to the lore and the story, which then goes into Black Ops 3 and then Black Ops 4 with Blood of the Dead. Did you know, PhD Flopper and Mule Kick can actually be seen in the docks area, but are completely unavailable and unusable. Both are available in Grief in Cell Block however. Did you know, Electric Cherry originally had a 1980s disco themed jingle and was finished but was cut in development due to the fact that the jingle didn't overall fit the tone of Mob of the Dead, and Treyarch have confirmed, both Craig Houston and Jason Blundell have both confirmed this, there is a finished complete version of the Electric Cherry jingle just sitting around at Treyarch somewhere. Hopefully they release it one day if Electric Cherry ever comes back to zombies. Mob of the Dead also features an alternative loading screen which references the events of Black Ops War's Blood of the Dead and Richtofen's underground labs where Victus can be seen stored in the cryopods from the events of the Zombies comic. Okay, so in conclusion, Mob of the Dead is a near perfect masterpiece of a zombies map and in my opinion is one of the best Call of Duty zombies maps not only in Black Ops 2 but of all time. Its soundtrack, characters, background lore, story, ambiance, setting, new gameplay features are incredible and make it a unique and master crafted experience by Blundell and Treyarch. Mob of the Dead is so good that even with certain limitations of the old hardware in Black Ops 2, it's still one of the most fun zombies maps even going past and beyond modern day in 2024. I will always look back fondly at Mob of the Dead as the map that not only kickstarted the new Black Ops 3 era of peak zombies, but also added lots of quality of life improvements and features such as the background soundtrack, round change music, HUD changes, 
and part inventory system that all you know added up to make zombies evolve into a more story driven fun complex mode that just went past surviving rounds. Anyway everyone, I've been Lockhart Cutie and thank you so much for watching the video today and tell me in the comments below why do you like Mob of the Dead and tell me what are some of your favourite memories playing the map. For me, I love the music, the story and just everything to do with the map. And if you want more Zombies retrospective videos where I've covered maps like Die Rise and Call of the Dead, they'll be linked in the description below as well as on screen. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time in another episode of the Call of Duty Zombies retrospective series. Take care and goodbye.